Welcome to Mission to Inspire. My name is Shola. I'm your host. And we're joined today by Rich Lewis. Hi, Rich. How are you? Good, good. Uh, great to be on today. So thank you so much. <laughs> thank you for coming on our show. Um, Rich, I'm going to actually let you introduce yourself properly. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do, so we can know who you are? Sure. So I'm Rich Lewis. I have a website called Silence Teaches. Well, it's at silenceteaches.com. And really the main thing, my web, my website um, focuses on centering prayer, which is a way to connect to your true self. But what I like to do and, and, and is on my website, share information on how people can really discover their true self, take daily action on this person. And then when you do that, you impact the world. So uh, that's really what I'm all about is, is practices that help you discover your true self. Mm -hmm. And then you have the courage to take action on th this person. And then you definitely impact the world when you take action on your, on your true self. Right. Right. So um, you are then about helping people to discover who they are. Correct. Correct. And, and, he, and I'm on the journey myself as well. It's, ah. it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lifelong journey to okay. discover your true self. Who is this person? What actions should you take? And, and what things, what are the obstacles that get, get in the way? You know, fear, lack of confidence, um, thinking you're too young or too old to try something. Any of those things are barriers to, to that. Right. Okay. So, um, can you actually share your personal journey with centering prayer and sure. how, yeah. Can you share that with us a bit? Sure. Um, I began practicing centering prayer in really June of 2014. So prior to that, I kind of was stumbling. So in, in 2011, 2012, I, I had read books um, that talked about how transforming and powerful silences and the idea of sitting in silence with God. Mm -hmm. So I, I used to just try that. And I sort of was stumbling in the dark because it is hard just to sit by yourself with you and your thoughts in silence. Mm -hmm. But for, fortunately, I came across a book. I was perusing Amazon looking for a book to read in late 2013. And mm -hmm. I came across a book called Healing the Divide, Recovering Christianity's Mystic Roots by a gentleman by the name of Amos Smith. And mm -hmm. as I read the, as I read his book, he talked about a practice called centering prayer that he had been doing, and and that immediately piqued my interest. So I tried the practice for myself, and then I also reached out to him on his website and began a back and forth email dialogue. So yeah. I guess my centering prayer journey really began late 2013, and it helped me sit in silence because it was a pra I didn't know how I didn't know how to sit in silence I needed a practice or a way of opening myself up to this uh, the silence of God God within the silence so yeah. I guess I began seriously practicing centering prayer um in in you know mid to mid to June ish of, of 2014 and I haven't looked back so I guess it's at this point it's been that's been 10 years that I've been practicing centering prayer uh, generally twice a day you're right that's good. I know you're an otter. Did this practice help you become an otter? <laughs> because you have to do that in silence as well, I guess. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> it, it did. I mean, the, the practice, um, and, and that was, I'll blame it on Amos Smith. So I'd mentioned I read Amos's book. We began yeah. a back and forth dialogue. We became yeah. friends. And he, right. he was the one that challenged me to write a book. He said, I think you have a lot, lot to say a lot of things to share and he nudged me and encouraged me to, to write a book, but mm -hmm. no, I think you're right. Sitting with God um, helped me ha with the discipline and the courage to write a book because just like centering prayer where you have to discipline yourself to sit for that 20 minutes, if you're going to do it or up to 20 minutes a day um, yeah. and, and sometimes twice a day, it's mm -hmm. a, dis it's a discipline and, and the same thing writing, 
you know, the fruits of centering prayer kind of f- fall fall outside of centering prayer to my everyday life. And mm. one of the one of the fruits was the courage to to write a book, the discipline to write a book, and the persistence mm. to write a book. Because that's a that's a very long term project. It's not mm-hmm. like I'm going to sit down and write a book. You have to write it, and you have to edit it, and then you have to decide how are you going to publish it, yes. and then. And then, and then you, you probably want to market it. Some people don't. And I think some people will write a book and then they don't market it. But mm-hmm. so it's, it's a kind of a long-term project, write it, edit it, publish it in some capacity, and then market it because you want people to find it, read it and be helped by it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and my opinion is a book, book has a lifetime of forever. So I, I don't think you ever stop marketing any of your books, whether you have one or two or three, they have a lifetime of forever. And there's mm-hmm. billions of people in the world that, that could read your book. So your audience is, is unlimited. That's true. That's true. So your book is titled Sitting with God, A Journey to Your True Self, True Centering Prayer. Correct. Correct. Where do we find that if we want to buy Sure. You can find it on, uh, it's on Amazon or most, most online booksellers, Barnes and Noble, Amazon. I, I, and I, I, I'll Google it. I've, I've seen a number and you, you, you know, you mentioned you're in the UK. I've seen a number of online stores in the UK that I've seen it on, but it's, it's really, you can find it at, at, at any online bookseller of really of your choice. You'll, right. you'll, pro- you'll probably find it. Or if, and now obviously Amazon is in most countries or a lot of the countries you could, you can definitely purchase it through Amazon too. Hmm. What, what is it that we can, what, what is in this book that is so intriguing that, you know, you want to, I know you want us to buy and read. What, I, what is it in there that, well, you know, what is, what can you, and not, you know, something from that book. Sure. <laughs> So yeah, the, the book itself, and and I'll thought I had it behind me here. No, here it is. I'll, I I love the book cover. They they did a great job oh, with the book, and it, it. it's a. I, I wanted to, I wanted to bench, and then actually the neat part is the bench kind of wraps around the back of the book. So mm-hmm. I just thought I thought the book w- was beautiful. But um, what's in what's in the book is I mean really it's it's my journey. It you know yeah. it talks. Obviously, it talks about centering prayer, so it'll help people that are new to the idea of centering prayer and, and understand what is this practice and how do you begin it. Yeah. But it's also good for people that have already been practicing and help them deepen their practice. And, yeah. and I talk about you know your true self and, and how you connect to your true self through, yeah. center, through centering prayer. Yeah. But then I also, I also talk about... Um, Jesus in the book, because I think of it as I'm sitting with Jesus and then I'm getting up and walking with Jesus. So there are a couple chapters where I talk about um, the, the historical Jesus, like what, what do the scholars say we can know about this man? Yeah. And then I, then another chapter where I just talk about kind of the humanity of Jesus. What, what kind of human actions did we see of this Jesus, you know, as, as, as we read the new Testament, for yeah. example. So mm-hmm. the book really, you know, talks about what is centering prayer. It helps people deepen their practice. It talks about Jesus. And then it, it talks, um, really about my journey and, and how it, how it's healed and transformed me. So I I'll share some stories from my own life um, and, and my, and and my family in it in hopes that if I make, if I'm a little bit vulnerable and share Mm -hmm. how it's healed me, transformed me. And, and that I, that I think it can do the same for you. If you give this practice Mm -hmm. a chance for yourself. Yeah. 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 How is sitting with God how is it? I mean, in silence, though, how is it different from other meditation? Sure. So it is meditation. Uh, the difference that centering prayer practitioners believe is we believe during centering prayer that we're, we are deep, we're opening to the presence and actions of God within. So we consider it meditation, but we also consider it kind of deepening our relationship with God because right. during, during centering prayer, we open to the presence and actions of God within mm-hmm. and, and, and trust that God is going to act in us at a deeper level beyond our thoughts and emotions. And, and, and that I, I think of it as a reverse prayer during this time, I'm getting out of the way and we can talk about how you do it, but mm-hmm. um, I think of it as a reverse prayer. God is praying in me, the actions God 
knows I need or, or the things that God knows I need. So it might be just an inner peace and calm, or it might be wisdom for a task, or it might be a nudge to try and do something new. So I, I'm, I, I do think of centering prayer as a reverse prayer that I'm letting God act in me. And that's what we do during centering prayer. We open to the presence and actions of God mm. um, during, during this time and get out of the way. So it's just a different way to pray rather than us talking. We're sitting with God and we're letting God act within us. Right. Does it involve hearing God? I would say during the time, not necessarily, yeah. mm -hmm. but outside of centering prayer, yeah. I'll, ju I'll journal and I'll, and I'll journal like, what do I think God wants me to do? What actions do I think God wants me to take? So, mm -hmm. so the answer to your question is, I guess, yes, but mm -hmm. I'll, I'll try to figure that out outside of my centering prayer practice through reflection and, and journaling. Right. Okay. 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 What um, are some practical tips for beginners um, that you can share? <laughs> sure, sure. Um, well, I would say, so why don't I give some tips and then I'll quickly say, share how you do the practice. But mm -hmm. I would say for someone, the idea of just sitting in silent meditation mm -hmm. is new. I would, one, I would say, you know, commit to try for 30 days. I would Then I would say, do it first thing in the morning to begin your day and take baby steps. So maybe just do it for five minutes, no more than five minutes. So tr commit to try it for 30 days, do it first thing in the morning and just try it for five minutes because minutes. that's not, that's doable. And many people like, for example, I've done talks in front of, and a lot of it's via, via zoom, but I've done talks mm -hmm. in front of groups and church groups mm -hmm. and everybody will come back and say, I thought this would feel like an eternity, but the five minutes wasn't that bad. And it actually <laughs> went, and it actually went fairly quickly. So that would be, that would be my tips is, is right. thir try 30 days, mm -hmm. try for five minutes Right. And then just reevaluate after the 30 day period. Is this a practice you want to continue? And then if it is, then yeah. I would say start increasing the time to, to 10 minutes and 15 minutes and, and perhaps even 20 minutes. Right. And then, it, and then if once you realize I, I love this practice, then mm -hmm. you add a, then you can add a second sit and it's good yeah. to add a second sit later in the day, whether it's the afternoon or mm. in the evening. So yeah. that would be my, my tips for, for a, a someone brand new to it right um, shall i share how you do it or did you have something you wanted to say before i went into that no show us how you do it i'm interested okay. sure <laughs> sure so centering prayer and, and then actually and the practice itself has been around for about 50 years it's it's centering prayer started in the early 1970s it was actually created by three trappist monks thomas keating basil pennington and William Menager, um, they were virtually three Catholic priests. They saw a lot of like transcendental meditation and other forms of meditation happening, and they wanted something more for the Christian community. Right. So William Menager was reading a classic book from the, I believe, the 12th century called mm -hmm. The Cloud, Cloud of Unknowing. And as he read this book, kind of a way of sitting in silence with God seemed to jump off the pages. So he kind of created this practice, and then the th three of them sort of fine-tuned it. And then in 1984, um, Thomas Keating created an organization called the Contemplative Outreach, and their website is contemplativeoutreach.org, and it's considered the main centering prayer organization with tons of resources and groups that practice all over the world wow. via, via Zoom. So you could, you mm -hmm. could probably join any group from wherever yeah. you are and mm -hmm. join their practice if they have a Zoom a practice and they do it on Zoom. So mm -hmm. That's just the his, history. It's been around for about 50 years. Right. And then, and, and really anybody can practice centering prayer. It's mm -hmm. uh, you come as you are with what, what you believe and what you think of God come as you are. Um, okay. to this practice so it's not it's not if you're not christian or you can't practice i think anybody can try this practice and and how you do the practice is you mm -hmm. you sit comfortable you sit comfortably with your eyes closed right. and then to begin your time of your silent sit you introduce interiorly what we call a sacred word so it's that word is usually two or three syllables so it could be mm -hmm. god it could be mm -hmm. ocean it could be jesus mm -hmm. and that word is really just signifying you're sitting and you're opening to the presence and actions of God within. And then as you're sitting there, 
when you begin engaging your thoughts, and what I mean by that is if you begin thinking about the the duties and errands you have after your sit and you begin planning and plotting the rest of your day, you mm -hmm. realize you're now engaging your thoughts and you're not really sitting with God in the present moment. You're sitting with you and you're planning and plotting. Mm -hmm. So then you reintroduce that word interiorly to come back to the present moment and let go of your planning and plotting and then even let go of that word. So you just use that word to bring you back to the present moment. It's not used as a mantra and there are mantra practices, centering prayer is just not a mantra practice. So you just use that word when needed. So sometimes you catch yourself and mm -hmm. you don't need to even use it. Other times you, you, you can catch yourself and you use that word to replace your engaged thought and you let go of that sacred word as well. Mm -hmm. And you, you do that when needed during the practice, during the duration of your sit. So if it's a 10 minute sit, you'll kind of repeat that process and then, um, generally at the end of the sit, then you might use a timer or something to signify the time's up. Um, you might sit in silence for another 30 seconds or so just to kind of reacclimate yourself to the world and then get up and begin your day or resume your day if you did it later. But that's essentially how you do the practice. So for me, it was helpful because it helped me know how to sit in the silence um, and, and had it open to the silence of, of God, sure. open to God in the silence. Yeah. So that's, that's a little bit of the history and, and how you do the practice. Right. Okay. So there is not like any particular way because with the traditional meditation, you know, you have got to do your fingertips and uh, cross your legs when you're seated. With this, you can sit anyhow you want to sit and just open up to God in silence. Agree. And I would say, I sometimes lie on my back and do it. Um, and I think some people may have back issues or neck issues. So mm -hmm. I would say you do it however it's most comfortable for you, whether it's sitting in a chair, mm -hmm. sitting, sitting on a ground. Some people yeah. sit on the ground cross-legged, but that, I can't mm -hmm. do that. It's just not going <laughs> to happen. Um, I, I, I think the main thing is as long as you're, you're not falling asleep. So if you're, you're in a position that's almost too relaxing and you're falling asleep, then you just okay. need to fi find a way to sit that or lie where you're not falling asleep because then you're defeating the purpose of, of this time. <laughs> oh, this time. What about walking? Like, um, you know, taking a walk and then, you know, actually I would say that you can do this when you're walking. Mm -hmm. And in fact, like some people have attention deficit disorder or they have such exactly. great racing thoughts in mind. So yes, you could do this practice mm -hmm. while you're, while you're walking. Mm -hmm. Um, Obviously, you just want you want to make sure you're paying attention so that you're not going to walk or bang it. But you, but yes, you can. It's you can. I would say you could definitely do this kind of like a walking meditation as well because it's mm -hmm. it's very easy just to walk mm -hmm. on a on a nice path or somewhere mm -hmm. and use this practice. Exactly. And and you and you and in some cases you don't even have to use a sacred word because you're kind of looking. Maybe you're just looking straight ahead and that's kind of keeping you focused in the now in the present moment. So yes, you can definitely do it. I would, I have said to some people, you could probably do this walking as well. Okay, great. That is helpful for people that don't want to sit still. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, how, in what ways do you think um, this practice, um, Centering Prayer, can contribute to mental and emotional well being? Sure. So actually, if you think about dur during centering prayer, a lot's happening. So when you're sitting there, if, you, if this is a practice and you do it day after day, week after week, month after mm -hmm. month, year after year, mm -hmm. a lot is happening physically and mentally. So, you know, emotionally, you're letting go of thoughts um, that you know you have, because as part of the practices, you're not to engage your thoughts, you're to let them go. So each time you're bringing it up, perhaps an unhappy thought mm -hmm. of some sort, you're letting it go. Yeah. But also sometimes repressed thoughts that you didn't even know you were hanging on to come mm -hmm. out. So you're mm -hmm. kind of letting go of repressed thoughts. Mm -hmm. And then your body, your body releases tension and stress every time you sit. So you're, so mm -hmm. during this time, you're letting go of thoughts and emotions, you're letting go of repressed emotions, and mm -hmm. you're letting go of tension in your body. Um, so you're, it's really kind of like a physical and emotional and mental healing over over the long haul as, as well yeah. yeah is is what happens and then you're 
you experience benefits outside of the practice, you notice mm -hmm. things about yourself. You notice that you're calmer. You notice that you're more excited to live life. You notice that mm -hmm. you're more willing to try and do new things. Mm -hmm. you, you notice that maybe you're a better listener and, and listening to people instead of always, um, and, and you're better at maybe just listening and not analyzing and, and judging. So you start seeing some of these things outside of the practice as well. Right. Oh, that's interesting. Interesting. But then can we do this sitting down with someone um, who's never, I mean, can we do this in group? Does it have to be, because it has to be in silence. So can it be in group or does it have to be individual? No, it could be both, actually. For example, obviously, it's an individual practice. For me, in the morning, I get up and do it. But once a month, myself and, and another peer, we, we hold a gathering, and, mm -hmm. and, and it's via Zoom, and we'll have you know six or 10 people join us, oh. and, and, and we'll give a talk, mm -hmm. and then we'll do a centering prayer sit together. Right. And then, and then after the sit, we um, just have time to talk and share. Right. But but. But so you can definitely do it and doing it in group is powerful. Like an, an example of, of doing it in a group is like, I've gone on a weekend, I've, I've been on weekend retreats mm -hmm. and it, and it's, and it's a group of, you know, 30 or 40 or 50 people yeah. learning from each other on, you know, where there's talks, but then there's throughout the day, there's two or three centering prayer sits and mm -hmm. we're doing, we're doing it together. Right. And, that, and then I also the Quakers, I, I was curious a couple of years back, the Quakers have a tradition, it depends upon which Quaker, what group you go to, but the traditional Quakers have the, a silent, a, a silent service. Right. And, and, and I went to one near me and there was about 100 people in an old house, kind of an old house from the 1800s, and, and it was a silent service. Um, yeah. They had announcements and stuff, but it was really powerful to sit in silence with about 90 people, mm -hmm. include, including children. So I remember sitting down and then I remember the doors closed. And then I remember it was they said, we're going to we're going into our silence and they just were silent. And then what they did is if someone had something, some insight came to them that they wanted to share, they would stand up and share it and then mm -hmm. sit down in silence again. Yeah. And then they then they would announce after about forty minutes they announced the silence time has ended. And then they had their normal announcements yeah. and they had prayer time and talked about upcoming you know activities. But that yeah. was like a thirty to forty minute sit in silence yeah. with about ninety people, including children. Which yeah. I was it was really powerful. Just to, um, it was amazing to think I'm sitting here and nobody's talking and we're all just sitting here with each other. So it, it, it is powerful and it's powerful even on Zoom. Wow. Oh, because with children, it's really difficult. You know that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I would, I guess I would have liked to interview a few of the children in there to see how did, I mean, that's probably very amazing for a child to be quiet for that long. <laughs> it, would be, it would be. It would be. Oh my God. So if you are to sit down with someone who has never heard of centering prayer before, what will be the one thing um, you will want them to understand or experience about this practice? I would say um, they, they just need to, they need, they need to just, it's unique. I guess the benefits of it are unique for each practitioner. So yeah. I would say, I would explain to them, don't judge the sit because they might, they might do it and think I failed at it. All I did was think about what I'm going to do after the sit to where it was extremely difficult. And I would tell them one, there is no bad sit. If you, if you did it, you were successful. And mm -hmm. then, then just to look for the benefits of it outside mm -hmm. of the practice. So as you continue the practice, you're going to notice changes about mm -hmm. yourself or other people might notice it. So I would just say, don't judge the sit. There's no mm -hmm. such thing. You can't fail. The only way to fail is if you don't show up. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean you're a failure. It just simply means mm -hmm. if you don't show up, you mm -hmm. can't kind of reap the benefits that, that it can bring in your life. So just show up and trust the process, I guess is what I would say. Show up and trust the process. Trust the process. Show up and trust the process. What about people who want to do it? Try to do it, but then try to do it for five minutes. And then within two minutes, their, their mind 
raises and go, you know, drift and they start thinking of something else. <laughs> That, I mean, that's part of the process too. That that's that's the way our minds work. That's going to happen. So that's that's okay. Just return to your sacred word. When that happens, return to the word. So if you had to return to that word a hundred times, that's okay too. Right. So again, just sit and trust the process. Mm -hmm. and, and you're human, and and our minds are all over the place at times. So that can happen to me too. Sometimes it's a lot of racing thoughts other times it's a lot less racing thoughts and and maybe even if you have a lot if you're if you're beginning your sit in an agitated mode maybe you do something before you sit maybe you take a, a five minute brisk walk if you can or yeah. you do do something do 10 jumping jacks or you do do <laughs> something that'll do, make do, you do tired <laughs> do something to kind of shake off the edge and then do your sit uh, mm -hmm. is another thing. Or you, and, you, and I even encourage make the time fun. Like maybe you read, maybe like I, I'll read before I'll, I'll read a book for five minutes or so, then I'll do my sit. And it could be any book I'm reading. Mm -hmm. So make it, make it a neat routine where you're doing something before it and you're doing something after it and make it a nice routine for you as well that you, that you look forward to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you so much for joining us today centering prayer it's something i've never heard about before but as christians i know we have to do it anyway we have to sit down and be silent so that we can hear from god and talk to him and stuff so thank you so much for sharing <laughs> no thanks for having me on and you, you asked great questions to help people better understand what what is this thing that rich lewis is talking about so so thanks for having me on i really really appreciate it Thank you so much. I mean, it is interesting for people that want to do meditation. You know, some people, they put um, a label on things and they want to do meditation. And they just feel Christians don't have any form of meditating. And this is one way, to be honest. So, yeah, thank you so much for coming on our show. Sure. Thanks again. I appreciate it. <laughs> thank you, everyone, for joining us today. And until next time, it's Shola and reach on mission to inspire thank you <laughs> bye okay thanks subscribe if you haven't done so like follow comment until next time goodbye